Hello and welcome to my Nature Diaries. Happy New Year and with the new year I thought I would share with you 10 tips on maybe how to make nature journaling a little bit easier. At least these are some tips that I feel like have helped me and hopefully they will help and inspire you as well. If they do, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to have you follow along. As I continue this layout, let's get started with tip number one, and that is to prepare your layout in pencil. I can't tell you how much of a stress reliever this is when I draw out my whole layout in pencil. I draw lines in to help me know where I'm going, and all these things can be erased, and of course I draw very lightly, but this is a great tip. Tip number two, use a full page to highlight your subject. As in this winter berry photo that I took of this beautiful bush, I wanted to highlight it and how it looks in the fall. And so I decided to make a whole page dedicated to, you know, the leaves and the berries. Number three, make three to five spaces for your drawings and art. Counting the big drawing on the left, I'm gonna put two more in on the right hand side and I'm using this lid of course to just give me the shape that I need but it also makes a great tool to just help me to compose the layout itself. Tip number four is to show multiple seasons of your plant. I have the fall picture that I took on the left but now I wanna showcase the spring flowers of this plant because one of my goals in nature journaling is to not only to record what I'm seeing, but I also want to learn what to look for when I'm out hiking and out and about. So this really helps me by drawing out the spring flowers that I'll be able to identify them next time. So this is an important thing, depending on your goal when you're nature journaling, is to include as many seasons as possible. And you could always leave it blank and come back in in the spring and fill that in. Tip number five, try to fill both pages in a similar way. What I mean by this is because I filled in that left page completely, I really want to do the same thing on the right hand side. So I just need to be thoughtful when I'm working on my drawings and my sketches and composing the whole layout and spread to make sure that I'm filling it out and making it as cohesive as possible. And I'm gonna do this with a combination of sketches and text and you'll be seeing that in some of my other tips but this is something to think about that you want to create balance by either filling in both of sides of the page or you, there's ways that you could get around that as well of course but there is something about really working on that composition and thinking about it ahead of time Tip number six, feeling overwhelmed, try painting in layers. So when we do make a sketch or draw something to paint, it might help to paint in layers. And I just decided to do that. I started with light colors and I just kept adding darker colors, leaving those light colors there. Um, although I did paint over the light, some of the lightest greens, but that really helped me work with this cellulose paper, which isn't the easiest and shows brush strokes, but um, I didn't feel as overwhelmed by doing it that way. Number seven is create visual interest with ink drawings only. It's totally okay to add just an ink drawing to your layout or your spread. And I use the backdrop colors to just kind of highlight that and help the ink drawing stand out. And we have to remember that the lightest color on a page will, or on a canvas will draw your eye to it. So it's a way to kind of help it to when it's competing with the other paintings and drawings on the page. So that's just a thought when you are making your design plans is to keep some of them black and white. And tip number eight, to make cohesive, use the same colors on both pages. I should have put some red berries on the right hand side, which I didn't do. So I end up just taking the red paint that I used, uh, red cadmium, and I used it on the right hand side as well. And also added a few little dots and splashes just to try to create some balance from the left to the right hand side. So that's just one way to try to create harmony in your total layout is to add the same colors. Tip number nine, use text to fill in small spaces. Now I will be writing in all of the large spaces to the left as well, but when you have these open spaces and they just don't look right, 
feel free to put some little text in there, some little facts. And the same thing with the diagram over on in the middle there. It's just a good way to add interest and it breaks up the writing. And that's one of the things I did learn after journaling from the last one is I ended up breaking up my text boxes. So it felt a little bit easier to read. It didn't feel as much of a diary page or a journal page. So that's something to think about when you are composing your nature journal is how much text do you want in there? I like to have a lot, um, but you just want to make sure you have space. Tip number 10, repeat the design elements to make your journal cohesive. I am going to be repeating a lot of these uh, designs that I have and the elements throughout my journal. And that's going to help to make the the journal feel like a book in itself and kind of like it works together. Now you don't have to do that in yours. I didn't for the first one, but I think I'll try to be a little more intentional with this. And that's just something to keep in mind when you're making your nature journal. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and remember you are amazing and creative. Bye.